One of the most popular sweets would have had to be macarons at one stage. Then after that, it was all about the eclairs. And I still think they're very much in vogue. I love eclairs. So I'm going to pay homage to the eclair by making a giant one. This giant one is called a Paris breast. It was to celebrate the famous bicycle ride from Paris to Brittany, where the town Brest is. Now, this eclair is shaped as if it was a tyre, so one big ring. And we need to start by making a choux pastry. Now, a choux pastry is a combination of water and butter, which I've already started to bring to the boil, and flour. So I'm adding one and a half cups of plain flour here that I'm measuring out accurately. While it's still boiling, I'm just going to start mixing this with a wooden spoon until it forms a dough. Now, choux pastry is fantastic because it gets really puffy and golden brown on the outside, quite crunchy also, and then in the centre, it's quite hollow. So what I'm going to do is form this wheel, cut it in half and then fill it with a creme patissiere. Now, you can see that this is coming together. Now, I'm going to turn off the heat and I'm going to start adding the eggs. Now, you can beat this in with the wooden spoon, but if you want to cheat a little bit, use your mixer. So I've got my mixer on standby. I'm going to take this dough out of the bowl and pop it straight into the mixing bowl. And now I'm going to incorporate six eggs. Now, it's quite a lot of eggs, but you really must beat it quite well between each egg. perfect sticky and it's come together it's glossy which is a really really good sign now I'm going to place this mixture into a piping bag now this piping bag has a nozzle in it which is a two centimeter in diameter nozzle this is going to ensure that we make the perfect ring so open that up and grip it around your fingers just like this. It makes it so much easier to place this choux pastry. Now, you would have noticed when I was placing the eggs in that the mixture does break up a little bit. Once you've given it a really good mix, it does come back together just like this. All right, that's enough mixture. Now, I'm just going to twist this. I'm going to cut the end off just with some scissors here and we're ready to start piping. Now, I have a tray here that's lined with some baking paper and I've drawn on a 20 centimetre ring and I'm going to trace this line with the pastry. So it'll be a nice thick line like that. Looks like a bicycle wheel. Now you just want to make sure that the seam here is attached, so just a little bit of water and press that down. Perfect. And now I'm going to trace another ring and it's going to be in the centre and it can touch the original ring there. You actually want it to touch the original ring. And now we need a final ring and this is just going to help this turn into a crown, if you like, and puff up. We're going to place the last ring in the centre of this seam, just here. Voila! So that is the shape of our Paris breast. Now I'm going to just press that down again with some more water. You don't want any of these peaky little bits because it will burn in the oven. I need to make this quite glossy so we get a nice shine on the pastry. So just a little bit of egg wash around. And classically with this type of choux pastry, you garnish with some almond flakes. They don't need to be roasted because they're going to roast in the oven and you can be quite generous with these. And it looks quite small at the moment, but this is going to double in size in the oven. So 210 degrees, quite hot to start with, so we get a really good lift in the pastry. And then I'm going to turn the temperature down to 190 degrees, and that's going to cook for a further 30 minutes. going to get on to the creme patissiere. Now this is a custard and I started off with some milk into a pot. Now this is two and a quarter cups of full cream milk and I'm going to flavour it with some vanilla. I like to use fresh vanilla and cut it straight down the centre and then I'm just going to scrape the seeds out. It always tastes so much better if you use a vanilla bean and then place all 
of those little seeds straight into the milk to flavour it. I'll also add that vanilla bean to also infuse that milk. Now I'm going to add a quarter of a cup of caster sugar to the milk and a quarter of a cup of caster sugar to some corn flour. Now this is what makes a creme pat different. This is going to be the thickening agent, but I like to add the sugar to the corn flour and give it a really good mix. And that'll ensure that there's no lumps when we mix this corn flour and sugar mixture into our egg yolks. Now I've got six egg yolks here that I've already separated. And now I'm going to place this mixture in to the bowl. You can sift it if you like. So I'm going to combine this with a whisk so there's no lumps and it starts to get really pale and creamy and glossy. See how that's transforming? And now this milk is boiling, so I'll take it off the heat and I'm going to strain that just so I can catch that vanilla bean. And now I'm just going to give this another really quick whisk just to combine everything together. You want to whisk this immediately so it doesn't scramble. And you can see it's a little bit thin at the moment, so creme patissiere is quite thick. So I'm going to put it back into the same pot onto a moderate heat, and then I'm going to constantly stir this until it does thicken up a little bit more. Then I'm going to place it into a bowl and let it cool completely before covering it with some glad wrap, and then it needs to chill until it's really cold. Now, have a look at this. This is our gorgeous ring that we've created. And I'm just very carefully concentrating on cutting this in half because we're going to sandwich our creme patissiere in the middle of this. Oh, that is so good. That's how it should be. It's a little bit soft, but it's got all those air bubbles. You can see that they've popped in the oven. Now, I'm going to place the base onto my presentation plate. I've also got some strawberries here that I'm going to garnish. And then this is where you can change it up. Now, this is just a classic creme patissiere, but I've seen these in different shops where they use chocolate. You can make a coffee patissiere if you like. There are so many different options. This is nice, however, because I'm going to add some fresh fruit, the strawberries. Now, I'm going to pile them up so they stick to the custard and the colours. They're so good. And if you've got some raspberries on standby, mix it up with the red fruit, or you could add some blueberries to this. I think you should add lots of fruit because you really want to distinguish the layers here. Perfect. And now for the crown, very carefully turn that over. Look at those golden almonds on top. And that just sits there proudly. Now to finish it off, you must add a little bit of icing sugar, just a little light dusting because I still want to show off those almonds. Give this a go at least once a year. If you nail that creme patissiere, you nail the choux pastry, then you've got a pretty serious dessert on your hands. This is going to impress so many people. This shows technique. If you can nail this, you can nail anything in the kitchen, I say.